We are going to learn how to properly use our fuel cells. Here are the things you will need. We will go over each piece individually in the coming shots. You will need distilled water. Make sure it's distilled water. Can't be tap water, has to be distilled water. Impurities in tap water can ruin the function of your fuel cell. There are two ports on the outside of your fuel cell. You will need to attach the tubing from your distilled water bottle to one of the ports on the outside on the oxygen side of the fuel cell, the red labeled side, the positive side of the fuel cell. You only need to hydrate or put distilled water in to the oxygen side of your fuel cell. Squeeze your bottle and as you squeeze you will see water go through the grid matrix in the center and bubble out the bottom. Tap your fuel cell gently on a paper towel or a cloth in case there's any excess water on the outside of your fuel cell. Now it is time to use the gold connecting leads included in your kit. Each fuel cell will need two, one for each side. Be sure to close up your baggie as these tend to roll away pretty easily. Here's an up close view of the lead. It has a fanned front section that will be plugged into the cell and the back section is nice and round for a good connection from either an alligator clip or coiled wire. You plug this piece in to the red circle section of your, of your oxygen side of your fuel cell. You will repeat this step on the other side. Our next step is to get our cell ready to capture the gases. There are two ports on the outside of the cell, one we've already used to hydrate, and now we are going to attach our gas capture devices, in this case needleless syringes that have been labeled with an O for an oxygen, H for hydrogen. As you can see, they don't just connect, we're going to need a bit of tubing. This is regular silicone tubing, and we're going to cut a length of tubing. I roughly used my thumb. Your length of tubing will depend on the overall dimensions of your car. Now we need to attach the tubing to the end of the syringe. Warm up the tubing between your two fingers by rubbing it together. That helps make it more flexible. And gently but firmly, firmly push onto the end of the syringe tip. Repeat on the other side. Now we're going to connect the syringe to the port on the outside. Make sure you match up your oxygen syringe to your oxygen side of your fuel cell. Again, you're going to grab the tubing by the very end, rub between your fingers to make it more flexible if needed, and gently but firmly roll it on to the port on the outside of your fuel cell. And repeat on the other side. Again, double check to make sure you have the hydrogen on the hydrogen side and your oxygen on the oxygen side. There's some more tubing that we will need to cut for this fuel cell to work properly. There is another port on the bottom of both sides. This is where excess gas will escape. Not every reaction runs perfectly, so some gases will not be captured by your syringes and need a place to escape the cell. We are going to cut a length of tubing for both sides. The length will depend, again, on the dimensions of your car. 
This length I'm using is just for example. We have some pins that will plug up the end of your tubing. Take out one red pin and place into one of your cut pieces of tubing. Attach the red pin tubing to the red side of your fuel cell. It will go on the opposite port of where your gas captures tubing is. Remember, if the tubing is difficult to work with, rub between your fingertips to warm it up and increase its flexibility. Repeat on your hydrogen side. Next, we're going to add power. Remember always red to red, black to black. Okay, now we can turn on our double battery pack. I'm using two AA batteries inside a battery pack that has one red lead and one black lead to connect to the red side and the black side of my fuel cell. Only use a total of three volts for this step in the process. This step of the process may take a little bit of time and patience, but if you stay with it, you will see your syringes will fill all the way up. You may notice one side fills faster than the other. Maybe something to think about for later. Now we are going to run the reverse reaction, making this act as an actual fuel cell. We are going to apply an electrical load. In this case, the Pitsco 280 motor that you are provided in your kit with a simple gear on the other end. I'm using a double-sided red alligator clip to connect it from the fuel cell to the back of the motor, and I have a black one to connect on my hydrogen side to the back of my motor. Let's see if it works. Listen for the whir of the gear on the motor. Now let's connect our fuel cell to something a little bit more substantial. Here I have a gearbox and chassis set up. There are gears on the inside, an axle going through, here's a close-up of the gears, and I've connected those red and black alligator clips to the back of this motor straight to the fuel cell. You will notice that the plungers of the syringes do not get sucked in as dramatically as they get pushed out when we were charging. This doesn't mean your fuel cell isn't working, as you can see here. Let's take a close-up of the fuel cell now that we've run both the first electrolysis reaction and second fuel cell reaction. If you look on the red positive oxygen side, towards the bottom you can see it's darker in color where some of the water has pooled. Also notice the buildup and condensation in the red plug tubing. That's where those excess gases that weren't properly captured escape the cell and recombine with ambient air to form water droplets. Now let's take apart the components of our fuel cell so we can store it. You're going to remove any wiring, so we have our red and black alligator clip leads. We will remove and put to the side. Next, we will remove the syringes. Push down your plunger when you store your syringes and when they're not in use. You can feel free to leave that tubing that you connected on so you don't have to repeat that step next time. Remove the excess tubing with your red pin and your black pin. And one more time, you can see that condensation buildup in the excess tubing on our red oxygen side. Remove and set aside. Leave those pins in so you don't have to repeat that step next time. Take your gold pins out and set aside. Be careful they don't roll away on you. And now a close-up of our spent fuel cell. You can see it towards the bottom where the water has pooled. This means you don't need to hydrate your cell each and every time you run it. So I would say for our model car purposes, you could probably get two to three runs of your car per each hydration. If you have any excess moisture on the outside of your cell, just dap it dry with paper towel or cloth. And you're gonna wanna seal it in an airtight container like a Ziploc bag like I have here in the video. You could even wrap it with cling wrap nice and tight. Whatever it is, you're going to want to make sure that it's able to seal and no air gets inside. Never blow on your fuel cell to dry it. Don't use a hair dryer on it. All of that can introduce impurities to the cell and ruin it.
do not do that. Let it air dry as best you can and put it in an airtight container like I have here. Thank you for watching and remember always reuse distilled water. Only use 3 volts max to run the electrolysis step. Store in an airtight container. You can get 2 to 3 runs per hydration step. Thank you for watching. Good luck.